Sunrise and sunset. Promise and fulfillment. Birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. City people are gregarious by nature, and they feel more at home in a crowd. Rural folks, on the other hand, usually prefer solitude, and they derive a certain comfort from the lonely acres, the quiet, and the peace. My personal choice? Well, <laughs> that's not an easy question to answer. Time moves quickly in the city, and the minutes are filled with a certain hubbub and excitement that throbs and pulses like a living thing. While in the country, time has a more leisurely pace. A man can spend his hours in reflection. <laughs> no offense to my city friends, of course, but I'd say I was a country bumpkin at heart. Particularly now, with winter coming on. When the snow begins to fly, the sleigh bells tinkle a merry tune along the backwoods road. We saw this house is just round the bend, about half a mile up the road. Do you know her, Mr. Kibby? Miss Hobson? <laughs> I reckon I do. We've both been living in these parts for quite a spell. I haven't seen my aunt in over a year. She was Mother's favorite sister. Oh, an awful lot of fun. You go to spend some time here? I've been invited for several weeks. Oh, over the holidays, eh? That's right. Yeah. Seems to me your aunt ought to be mighty happy to have a cheerful young gal like you around for a while. <laughs> it's kind of lonely way up here in the woods. I suppose it does. And your aunt ain't been coming to town as much as she used to, eh? Uh... Fact the matter is, I I thought the house was closed. Really? Yeah, ain't seen Miss Hobson in so many months. I I figured maybe she'd gone away. Then I heard she'd gotten sick and uh, she went somewhere to uh, the hospital. No. Well, them things happen. I'm sure she must be all right now, or she wouldn't have invited me. Do you know what was wrong with her? Uh, no, I, I couldn't say, Miss, but uh, at least she come back. What do you mean, at least she came back? Uh, well, now, uh, I ain't going to spoil your holiday with country gossip. If it has anything to do with Aunt Emmy. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Uh, I was just thinking that someone else went away. Never returned. Disappeared like a puff of smoke. Ain't found hiding the hair of him for two months. You try to frighten me with a country ghost story, Mr. Gibby? It's a fact, miss. Friend of name Collins. Albert Collins. Came up through these parts one October evening, uh, yeah, around Halloween, and he ain't been seen since. <laughs> it would be Halloween. Was he carried away by a witch on a broomstick? You can joke about it, miss, but the folks round about here have the feeling that Collins was murdered. Murdered? Of course, that's just hearsay. When a man disappears without leaving a trace, yeah, nice fellow, this Collins, uh, he was a necktie salesman. Necktie salesman? Yeah, he carried a fancy line. He, 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 one of the boys at the general store said that he was probably strangled with one of his own neckties. <laughs> I don't think that's very funny, Mr. Kibby. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, sorry, uh, get up there. Get up there, Gideon. <sighs> I was hoping it'd snow this way for the holidays. Well, uh, you'd better start hoping it'll stop. Why? There's over two foot on the ground already. If she keeps up like this till morning, the Hobson farm will be snowed in. Oh, I won't mind. It'll be fun. What could be more romantic than a snowdrift in front of the door and a roaring fire? Yeah, I guess Miss Hobson's put in enough supplies. She's been caught in the blizzard before. Water, Gideon, water! What are you stopping here for? The house is behind them trees. Over yonder. Oh, yes, I see it. Can't go no further in the snow. Reckon you'll have to walk from here. Well, good thing I brought my galoshes. Oh, this is grand. What do I owe you? Fifty cents, miss. Here, keep the change. Thank you kindly. 
Hello there. Who's that? Don't rightly know. Looking for someone? Yeah, I'm going to Miss Miss Hobson's house. I'm Sid, a hired hand. Then give the young lady a lift for them bags. I said I'm Miss Hobson's hired hand, not hers. Oh, never mind. I'll carry them myself. Well, uh, I'll take one of them. Yeah, that's decent of you. Well, uh, so long, young lady. Have a good time for yourself. Thank you. Get up, Gideon. Get up. Well, I, I guess we'd better go. You sure you got the right place? Of course. I'm Miss Hobson's niece. She invited me up. Well, you ain't expected. What? I said she doesn't know you're coming. But she invited me. That's news to me. Would you mind picking up that bag and leading the way? Suit yourself. All I know is that she don't know you're coming. I only hope she don't get mad. Miss Hobson. What is it, Sid? Looks like you've got company. Lucy. Hello, Aunt Emmy. Oh, this is a pleasant surprise. Surprise? I guess I better get some more wood for the fire. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Aunt Emmy, I... What's he looking at? All right, Sid. Get your wood. Yes, ma'am. He's not very pleasant, is he? <laughs> Sid? Oh, he means no harm. He works hard, but only for me. He's handy to have around, even though his disposition isn't very good. Oh, sit down, Lucy, and tell me how you've been. Oh, I've been fine. I haven't seen or heard from you in over a year. Where have you been keeping yourself? I was just going to ask you the same question. I heard you were ill, Aunt Emmy. Oh, it wasn't serious. I need to rest more than anything else. I left the hospital just two days ago. What was the matter with you? It was um, mental more than anything else. Mental? Well, I mean, it was mostly in my imagination. Oh, but let's not talk about that now. I'll show you to your room, Lucy. Come with me. All right. Oh, you've got such a pretty place here, Aunt Emmy. It's so warm and comfortable. We don't depend on just a fire for our heat, Lucy. I have a modern furnace in the cellar, you know. <laughs> Sid said he keeps it hot enough to fry a man alive. What did you say? Well, nothing. What's the trouble, Lucy? You look rather nervous. Oh, I, I guess I'm just a little tired, that's all. It's been a long trip. Yes. Well, you'll get a good night's rest in here. This guest room's very comfortable. And it's certainly nice to have someone in it again. Hasn't been occupied since I went to hospital. On Halloween. Halloween? Oh, dear, Sid forgot to clear these bureau drawers. Never I'll mind get... about it, Aunt Emmy. I'll take care... Lucy, what's the matter? The straw's full of ties. Men's neckties. Oh, they were left here quite by accident. You see, I rent this room out occasionally to tourists and salesmen. My last guest left those in the drawer. What was his name, Aunt Emmy? Collins. Albert Collins. Why, Lucy, I thought you'd gone to bed. I couldn't sleep, Aunt Emmy. You're not ill. Uh, no, just restless. Well, sit down keep me company. Aunt Emmy? Yes, dear? Why did you have to stay at the hospital as long as you did? Oh, they wanted to look me over and ask a lot of questions. What kind of questions? I can hardly remember. Would you like some hot coffee, Lucy? Oh, no, I've I... just made some. It should be ready by now. Excuse me. Oh, I'll answer that, Emmy. Hello? State police calling. State police? Yes, we're issuing a warning to all residents of Calville. A woman inmate at the state hospital for the insane has escaped. She's in this vicinity and she may be dangerous. Paranoid type. Be sure and... Hello? Who was it, Lucy? <gasps> Aunt Emmy. Who called just now? The pol... I, I mean, I'm not sure. Something happened to the phone. The phone? Let me have it. That's odd. Oh, well, the heavy snowfall must have pulled the wires down. It's happened before. Can we fix it? Not before morning. 
Are you sure you don't know who it was who called, Lucy? Quite sure. I think you'd better go to bed. To bed? You look so tired, Lucy. Oh, I, I'm all right, honey. I'd rather not sleep in there alone. Would you like to sleep with me in my room? No, no. Lucy. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just not tired, that's all. Please don't coax me. Besides, it's still early. Well, I think I'll go down to the cellar and bank the furnace fire. But it's so warm in here right now. Oh, I like a real hot fire. But what about Sid? Doesn't he do that? He's probably gone to bed. I won't disturb him. Oh. Well, do you want me to go with you, Aunt Emmy? No, I'll manage alone. Somehow I manage to do almost anything alone. Lucy! I just thought I'd... I join you, Aunt Emmy. Oh, but it's so drafty down here in the cellar. I don't mind. Lucy, there's something worrying you. Uh, no, Aunt Emmy. What is it, my dear? What's frightened you so? Aunt Emmy, please answer me directly. Answer? What for, Lucy? About that hospital. Aunt Emmy, tell me, did you... Lucy, what is it? That, that axe there in the corner. It's got blood on the blade. Why, so it has. And there's a pool of blood on Emmy on the floor. Lucy. Lucy, dear. Oh. It's Aunt Emmy. Oh. What happened? Oh, you fainted, Lucy. I carried you up here. Oh. Blood on the cellar floor. It was only chicken blood. Chicken blood? The roaster we had for dinner. Sid must have killed it downstairs. Where is he, Aunt Emmy? Sid? Yes, I want to talk to him. What on earth? Oh. Let me go, Aunt Emmy. Who's he? I... Where is his room? Oh, over there across the hall. Sid. Sid. Doesn't he answer? Sid! Just a moment, Lucy. Why, he's... he's gone. Gone? Well, his bed hasn't been slept in. I, I can't imagine... He may be in the woolshed. Oh, not in this weather. No, he's gone. And I had such faith in Sid. I didn't think he'd desert me. Could... could he have walked out through the snow? It may not be so deep. Close that door, Lucy. You'll catch your death of cold. I can't even see the road anymore. You couldn't get through that storm alive in a thousand years. What's the matter with you, Lucy? Why are you behaving this way? What did you want with Sid? Nothing. Anymore. We don't need a man around. We're perfectly safe. No one will disturb us here, Lucy. We'll spend the night alone. Just the two of us. Time like falling snow adds up its hours quietly. You can sometimes hear the seconds go by, but the passing of the years is always silent. As silent as a country house marooned in snowdrifts, cut off completely from the world, and sheltering two women who are playing hostesses to terror. Hey, it's two o'clock in the morning, Lucy. I heard the chimes. Shall I put another log on the fire? If you like. Very strong, Aunt Emmy. I always have been. You carried me up the stairs from the cellar like you would have carried a baby. You'll always be a baby, Lucy, to me. I can remember when you were five years old. I took care of you while your mother was away. Do you know what was wrong with Mother, Aunt Emmy? Do you? I wasn't supposed to know, but I found out. She went crazy, Lucy. Yes. She and father. They said it ran in the family. 
From father to... How can you talk about it, Aunt Emmy? Isn't it better to face the truth? Sometimes it helps you to understand. Do you remember your mother very well? Yes. We were twins, Lucy. She and I. That's why I was always so fond of you. And I of you, Lucy. I still love you, Aunt Emmy, in spite of... In spite of what? Let's talk about something else. Come over here and sit with me. No, I'll stay where I am. Lucy, what's wrong? I wish you hadn't spoken about Mother, that's all. She was a wonderful woman. But she was a paranoiac. Is that what they called it? She had a persecution mania. She, she even... Killed a man, yes. Poor Flora. And now? And now? Oh, Aunt Emmy. Aunt Emmy. Oh, Lucy. Lucy, darling. Don't come near me. Lucy. Why don't you go to bed? Why don't you leave me alone and go to bed? I'm not tired anymore. Oh, Lucy, you worry me. I, I know you're not yourself. I want to get a doctor for you. Now? Can you get one now? No one can get through these drifts until morning, when the snowplow clears the way. And I wanted snow so badly. Lucy, I have something here that could put you to sleep. Some pills. Will you take them? No, never. But they're harmless. I won't eat or drink anything while I'm in this house. Well, Lucy, the way you talk, one would think I was trying to poison you. I don't want anything, do you hear? Nothing. Just as you say. That, that coffee you gave me before. Coffee? I drank it all. What was in it, Aunt Emmy? What did you put in it? Nothing, Lucy, nothing at all. How do I know? You know because I'm telling you. And I always tell the truth. Oh, yes. Yes, of course you do. I'm sorry, Aunt Emmy. I apologize. That's quite all right. I apologize for everything I've said tonight. Don't pay any attention to it, please. I've been overworked and nervous. Please forgive me. Of course, I understand, my dear. Aunt Emmy. Yes? Why is it so warm in here? I told you before, we keep the furnace hot. But it's so warm, it's uncomfortable. It's getting almost hard to breathe. Oh, that's just your imagination. Let me go down to the cellar and have a look. I... Stay where you are, Lucy. Why? Is there something you don't want me to see? Whatever do you mean? I mean inside that furnace. There's nothing inside there. But embers. I don't believe you. Lucy. You're burning something down there. That's why you rake those coals yourself. You're burning something. Lucy, be quiet. I'm... I'm being very silly, aren't I? Very. You wouldn't hurt me, would you, Aunt Emmy? Oh, never. Aunt Emmy, you always said you loved me. You still do, don't you? More than anything else in the world, Lucy. Then let me go. Let me leave here, please. In the storm. I don't care about the storm. I'm getting out. Lucy. Let me go. Let me go. Be quiet. Be quiet, you hear. Oh, all right, Aunt Emmy. I'll be quiet. But please let me go. Sit down where you were, Lucy. And relax. All right. You'll get sleepy soon. Then you can go to bed. No, no, I want to stay up all night. I don't want to sleep, Aunt Emmy. You don't have to, providing you're quiet. Hmm, that fire seems to be dying out. What are you doing with that fire poker? Tending the fire. Then why don't you put it back in the rack? No, I'll keep it here with me. Aunt Emmy! Yes. I've changed my mind. I am beginning to feel very tired. Do you want to go to sleep? Y yes. Good, I'll see you at your room. Oh, don't bother. I I'll go along. Oh, nonsense. I'll go with you. And I'll tuck you in. There, you'll be comfortable in here. It's still so warm. I'm going to open those shutters. Why won't they open? They're locked from the outside, Lucy. Why? Because of the storm. That isn't the reason. 
If you open those shutters, Lucy, the snow will come in. Now, I don't want you to catch pneumonia. Aunt Emmy, I demand that you open those shutters. No, Lucy. You'll sleep with them closed tonight. Good night, my dear. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Aunt Emmy! Aunt Emmy! She's locked me in! She's locked me in! Time moves on. I wonder what the clock holds for Lucy. Who's there? Is that you, Lucy? Away from me. What are you doing with that kitchen knife? You're not going to kill me, do you hear? Kill you? You took the fire poker when you went to bed and you locked me in. Oh, did I? It must have been an accident. It was no accident. You deliberately locked me inside my room. What did you plan to do, Aunt Emmy? Strangle me in my sleep? Lucy, how I could got out? you? Yes, I got out. There was a screwdriver in the drawer. It took me three hours to get that lock off, but I got out. I'm sorry how about that. How did you plan that? to get rid of me? The way you got rid of Albert Collins? Collins. You killed him. That's why he's been missing. You killed him and burned him in that furnace. Give me that knife, Lucy. And last night you killed Sid. Lucy, don't deny it. I saw the axe and the pool of blood. Chicken blood. Do you think I was a child? You expect me to believe that? I said, give me that knife. You put Sid in the furnace, and that's why the house was so hot. You burned him, Aunt Emmy, but you're not going to do the same to me. You're wrong about Collins, Lucy. He may have disappeared, but I had nothing to do with it. I explained that satisfactorily to the police. The way you are going to explain Sid's death and mine? No, no, Lucy. You won't kill me because I'll kill you first with this knife. No, Aunt Emmy, no. No, I'll kill you. Do you hear? I'll kill you. Lucy. Lucy, stop it. Here she is, Doctor. Here she is. Aunt Emmy's insane, completely insane, like my mother was. But I'm going to kill her. It's all right, Lucy. Everything's all right now. You're perfectly safe Uh with me. Give me the knife, Lucy. The knife? That's a good girl. Thank heaven. Sid got through to you in time. Yes, he uh, just made it, Miss Hobson. And he got the snow plow to clear the way for us up the road. Thank heaven for that. Uh, when, when did you find out, Miss Hobson? As soon as she walked in here, she didn't realize that I knew where she'd been for the past 12 months. Lucy? Yes, Doctor? We go back to the hospital now? Yes, Doctor. Goodbye, Aunt Emmy. Goodbye, Lucy, darling. It's been a pleasant holiday. A very pleasant holiday. I've had a most enjoyable time. And I'll remember you to Mother. And that was the story of Lucy as recorded by the clock. (laughs) What was I saying about the country before? The quiet, the peace. Apparently the city is much less wearing on the nerves, but be that as it may, I'm still a rural booster deep inside. I love the rolling hills and valleys, but most of all I like the people. They treat me well. They make the most of me. From sunrise when the chores begin to sunset when the fire is lighted on the hearth and the family settle down for a well-earned rest. And on Sunday, I put on my Sabbath best and roost high up on the steeple of the church. No elegance up there. 
No chromium-plated grandeur of the city towers. Just a rustic simplicity. A good place to spend my time. The Clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. It was written by Lawrence Clee and Hart McGuire narrated as The Clock. As Lucy, you heard Coralie Neville. As Emmy, Lynn Murphy. Others were Tom Farley, Ken Wayne and John Tate. The Clock is directed by John Saul, a Grace Gibson radio production. (laughs) 